I find this question very difficult to explain. So I'm going to give you the short version, and that might be good enough for most of you, but I will go into the long version uh, to, to help for if you're really trying to understand. So I, I already drew some triangles. I assumed that they were similar, so I drew them as if they were similar. Um, I labeled them LMN, RST. We know that L and R each have measures of 60, so let's put that in there. And we know that LN is 10 and RT is 30. So it looks like there's a ratio of 1 to 3, if they're similar. Now, we need to prove that they're similar. And there are two things that right off the bat, I think, don't make any sense. So hopefully we can eliminate choice A, because if MN and ST were both 7, we know what similar triangles mean. They mean that it's the same basic triangle shape, but one is bigger or smaller. It's kind of like a, a, it grows and shrinks. And so why would it grow for 10 to 30, but then the, the sevens are the same? That just doesn't make any sense. It, it hopefully just kind of strikes you as like, no, that's just like defeating the purpose of what a similar triangle is supposed to do. So that gets rid of A. Uh, choice C also hopefully kind of just, if you plot that on the um, on the pictures, you could see that doesn't make sense because if um, M were 70 and S were 60, we'd have a bit of a problem because then I know I didn't draw it this way, but the, the right-hand triangle would be 60, 60, 60, right? An equilateral triangle. So there's the angles don't match up. And that is to me the most important thing to know about similar triangles. The angles are the same. The sizes are different, right? They are in proportion, they grow and shrink, but the overall relationship of the angles is consistent. So if we had different angles, it's they're not similar. So that's gonna get rid of uh, choice C. Let me clear these out here. And from here, honestly, the short answer is choice D has gotta be right because of what I'm saying. We know how similar triangles work. It's all about the angles. Choice D is all about the angles. If we put those angles on there, we'd have M is 70, T is 50. So you're like, oh, those are different angles though. But if we filled in the missing ones, then S would be 70 and N would be 50. And we would see that the angles match up. So it does give us what we want, angles that are the same. And so for, for kind of just like simplicity reasons, B is going to kind of look maybe like it might be right, but we, if we understand that similar triangles are really all about the angles, we, we're probably just going to more confidently pick D here. We might not understand why B is wrong, but we feel that D is closer to being right. And so that's it. That's the short version. Explaining why B is wrong is kind of hard, though. So let me get rid of these angles that I just drew, clear it out again, and let's talk about what could happen with choice B. If MN were 7 and ST were 21, it would kind of look like these things are similar, right? The, the 10 times 3 would be 30, the 7 times 3 would be 21. We've got an angle that's the same. Seems like these things are looking like similar triangles. The problem is we're assuming they're similar. And so in our brains, it's hard to separate that from what we're actually supposed to do here. Our real task is to not assume that they're similar and then know what would come from that but to have some information and then use that to prove that they are similar. And knowing the sides is not enough here, even though they would be in proportion. And it's because there is one other way that we could draw these triangles, okay? If I preserved the seven, I have to kind of think of, in my brain, the way it works for me is I think of this letter N as like a pivot point, right? The, the angle there is unknown according to choice B. So those angles can kind of open and close. So if I swung this MN line out, I could have it be seven. I'm gonna to try to maintain, yeah, there we go. That also kind of looks like the same length as what I've already got there. So point M is now down here, and we have the seven, we'd have the 10, we'd have the 60, that hasn't changed, but now our triangles look different, right? That green triangle, does not look like the red RST. And that's because this, this kind of exists also with congruent triangles, and it's why when we have uh, angle, side, side triangles for congruency, it doesn't work, it doesn't prove them congruent. Don't be an ass is my little mnemonic to remember that. Um, but it has to do with the fact that there's this unknown angle that could kind of exist in two places with the same lengths attached to it. And so you kind of can form two different triangles. They have sides that look like they're in proportion, 
but that third unknown side would not be in proportion. And the angles inside would not be consistent other than that 60. So it, it looks like it at first, but there's this kind of ghost triangle that could exist that prevents us from proving definitively that the two things are similar. This is really hard, like I said at the beginning, to explain, to kind of wrap my head around. Um, I'm sure if you Google this, uh, specifically with congruent triangles and things like that, you can see some, some better demonstrations where it, like they do the pivoting for you. Um, but like I said, the short version is that the thing to memorize for similar triangles is the angles are consistent. D would tell us, choice D would tell us the angles are consistent. That's enough for us to just pick it and kind of trust that our memory is good, that we've understood the concept, and that for whatever reason, D doesn't really match with that. Um, it's tricky, but it's hopefully gettable for the last question.